everyone, welcome to this episode of Altitude. We're gonna have a great show for you today. We have three great guests. Uh, it'll be a very technical um, episode this time. We're gonna talk about servers and technology. We're gonna talk about software and coding. And we're gonna talk about teaching young people, especially young women, how to excel in the world of technology and do coding. So our first guest today is Cesar Duran. How are you doing, sir? Uh, pretty good. Good to see you. Thank you for inviting me. Good yes, to be here. Yes. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Did you, what, what do you do for a living? What's your title? So my title is a senior Windows systems engineer. Wow. I, uh, what I do at work is I work with the full Microsoft um, stack, mm -hmm. Windows servers, um, your Windows laptops, mm -hmm. and Microsoft Azure, which is Microsoft Cloud. Okay, so you're a specialist in all those different areas. Yes. Huh? So we're going to talk a little bit about what those, each of those individual things are, maybe a little bit about what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. So how did you, when you were younger, how did you decide, did you want to do this when you grew up? Actually, no. Uh, when I was in high school, I wanted to be a chef. Uh, really? My dad was a, a cook back in New York for 25 years, so I used to work with him in the kitchen. Okay. So uh, that, that interested me a lot, and I, that's what mm -hmm. I wanted to do. Uh, but uh, as I got a little bit older during my senior year, uh, a friend of the family's, uh, Deacon Ramon Smith, he was doing his MCSC 2000. And uh, since we were, I was pretty close with him, and he showed me his setup that he had in his basement. I, w I saw tons of computers routers, wiring everywhere. I'm like, what is all this? And they were all talking to each other? Yeah, okay. he had a full network, Active Directory, the full, the full okay. throttle, yeah. Okay. And uh, that interested me, and I started asking tons of questions, and he said, you know what? You should probably start with the A+. Oh. And I started there, and okay. you know, everything started from there. So A+, tell us a little bit about what A+, is. Is that uh, a... CompTIA A plus certification is that this? Yes, okay. at, at the time it was the course, not the not the certification. But mm -hmm. uh, where I worked um, around the corner was a was a technical school, mm -hmm. and they were offering the A plus course. Okay, and so I started there. Went to school in the mornings, worked in the afternoons, and uh, I started there learning uh, computer hardware. Mm -hmm. You know, back then when. Uh, Floppy drives and zip drives were still popular in the thing. Don't show our age, don't show our age. <laughs> so I started there and uh, that, it just hooked me. Okay. It just, I was hooked from there, learning the hardware, um, Windows, the software, mm -hmm. building a f computer from scratch, mm -hmm. taking it apart, you know, and doing all that. Man, that's incredible. Yeah. So you, do you have an A-plus certification now? I, I do a uh, CompTIA A-plus and Network Plus and, okay. and other certifications. And other certifications. So did you decide, I mean, so you just kind of fell into this, right? Yeah. Just quite by accident. And a lot of students fall into it yeah. because, you know, you go to high school, you're studying for your tests and trying to get through high school, and then what are you going to do when you get out? Right. And not everybody has a master plan, right? right? And the crazy thing is most everybody doesn't have a master plan when it comes to going to school. So it's very important that you come and that you've come and share your experience and your talents with us here on the show. Uh, and hopefully, as you indicated, you come back and volunteer too at the Altitude and the Minnesota STEM Partnership. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about, um, so you, you've, you wanted to be a chef, you wanted to do cooking, then you went into the certifications, fell into the technology. What type of things does that afford you to do now? I mean, are you glad that you got into it? I mean, are you able to oh, yeah. go on vacations? Yeah. Are you able to, you know, tell us I about would, the, what it does for you in your life. Oh yeah, you know, um, I got to the point of where, you know, you start kind of at the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. uh, being a, a PC technician, then mm -hmm. in my journey, I went from there to become a, a help desk um, analyst, and then from there, server administrator, and then mm -hmm. a systems engineer where I'm at now. And that has changed my life tremendously. I've been able to have a better work-life balance okay. where um, now I'm able to work remote from home as much as I want to mm -hmm. and where I could spend time with my family. My, um, you know, my live with my girlfriend and spend time with her at home, my daughter, and, um, and, <clears throat> and that uh, as well, you know, com the compensation, right, mm -hmm. goes up. So that's allowed me to take bit more vacations and mm -hmm. allowed me to go to places where um, I thought I'd never, you know, go to. So. Go, yeah. 
And that's the nice thing about the world of STEM and those education, the, the careers and the degrees that you can get out of that. They do afford you a better lifestyle. Yes. Yeah, and I would totally agree being able to go on vacation. So let's switch to like what a typical day would be for you at, mm -hmm. at your job. Because so, I saw, by the way, I saw a picture of your, your, your office and you had like four or five monitors. It looked yeah. like a NASA <laughs> space control in there. Yeah, that's my, that's my home office. So okay. where when I'm at home, I have all, you know, most of uh, work stuff going on and, you know, Netflix going on on, 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 the, on the fourth <laughs> monitor. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell the boss. But I have the, the same setup at work and uh, mm -hmm. typical day, um, it could go from anywhere from someone submitting a ticket that they need access to a specific server or share where we host uh, tons of data files where mm -hmm. somebody from the HR department of finance, hey, I need access to this because I'm in charge of this project. Okay. Something as simple as that to where our email server is down, mm -hmm. you know, nobody could communicate, where it's a severe uh, ticket where we need to engage either if it's one of our mail servers in our data center um, in the basement where we have to physically go down there and touch mm -hmm. it and work with it, mm -hmm. or if we need to engage our cloud uh, vendors, our cloud mm -hmm. partners such as Microsoft, we also manage uh, Google and Amazon Web Services. So okay. if we need to engage one of those vendors, you know, we, we need to work on how to shoot with them. So. Yeah, and I know you use a lot of technical terms. We're not going to stop and <laughs> explain all of them right now. We'll maybe put a little caption or something up. Uh, tell me a little bit about some advice that you would give to a 16-year-old, you know, where you're at now compared to where you started and you kind of fell into the A-plus certification yeah. in a good way. But what advice would you give that 16-year-old to get into this high-tech world? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, how long would it take, do you think, for them to achieve that? I would, um, if I would give advice to maybe a 16-year-old me, mm -hmm. I would, I would uh, make sure that, uh, you know, persistence. Mm -hmm. um, and, and also the hunger to have knowledge and to never stop learning. Mm -hmm. Because when I was younger, I, I, I was also interested in, in tech, like whenever my dad had a radio or a small TV. I would like to take it apart and just look at what mm -hmm. it was inside. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, th I was keen to that, right? But so if someone is young and they have sort of that uh, tinkering mentality, mm -hmm. I would say, you know, definitely start your A+. Uh, funda mm -hmm. Fundamentals are, are, are key. Mm -hmm. Because if you have your uh, solid fundamentals, you could build on that. Mm -hmm. Like if you come to you know, your A+, you'll have the computer architecture and knowledge. And then jump over to your network plus, where you could, um, d uh, you know, go into the networking world where networking connects everything in the world. So, mm -hmm. you know, systems wouldn't be systems without the network behind it, oh, right? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, for having those fundamentals, you could build on that and go into programming, coding, be a systems engineer, or, or go completely into cloud and, and be a cloud engineer. So. Mm -hmm. Um, so what I would I would recommend start there start with your fundamentals, um, get a good grasp on them, and per, when I said persistence, what I meant by that was um, when I was working uh, non technical jobs, mm -hmm. I used to apply to help desk positions, PC positions, mm -hmm. and I didn't I never used to get them. I was like, oh, you don't have experience, you don't mm -hmm. have this certification, you need this, you need that, mm -hmm. and so that used to you know affect me well like man I'm never gonna do this mm -hmm. but being persistent and doing self-study at home I invested in a server lab at home to mm -hmm. kind of get my um, hands on there and, and more training and being persistent and I'll, I'll continue to apply there's one company that I will take a chance on you mm -hmm. and and I had one company that did take a chance for me and I just took off from there well, you know, I, unless you have anything else to say, I think that's a very good way to end this segment. So yeah. any, any last thoughts that you have for the youth? Um, Besides yeah. grits, perseverance, all these success-related things. Yeah. This is I would say a mentor is very important uh, okay. because I had three mentors in my life. My father, for my personal side, he taught me work ethic mm -hmm. and persistence. And Ramon, uh, Deacon Ramon Smith where he took me under his wing mm -hmm. and showed me the, the technology side and a former Boston friend, Tom D'Antona, okay. which um, he taught me uh, how to uh, develop myself 
I was in the corporate in, co in corporate America and mm -hmm. had to grow my business a sense there as well. So. Amazing. Well, yeah. thank you for joining us today, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you All right, you. sir. Thank you. All right. Welcome back. And with me is Brianna McCullough. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? I'm wonderful. Well, thank you for joining us on Altitude today. I understand that you are a nine to fiver, mm -hmm. right? So you have a corporate job and you mm -hmm. also are an entrepreneur. You have your own STEM related and other type of business. Yes. So we're going to dive right in and just jump right in. So tell us what you do. On your so nine I am a network automation engineer at Target Corporation. Um, I work with network configurations on our server. So mm -hmm. I always tell people I work in infrastructure, right? So um, if I'm doing my job correctly, you should never see me because infrastructure <laughs> is what lays under like applications and stuff like yeah. that. So I just work with the servers behind the scenes. And I am the founder of Relimitless. Um, it's a woman empowerment brand. It's how I have documented my journey in technology. Um, it's like my baby, and I plan to do some coding um, camps and things through my brand. Sure, fantastic. Well, before we dive into that, tell us a little bit about um, in the realm of education. Did you, always, when you were younger, like you were 16 mm -hmm. years old, did you always decide you're going to be a, a network automation engineer? <laughs> no. Okay. I, I, if you would have asked me when I was 16, if I even knew what a network automation engineer did, I would have told you no. I had no idea. I wanted to be a doctor. To be honest and through that journey I've learned like what we want in life changes over time mm -hmm. so I went to college and got three years in and I was still majoring in human biology okay. so it took me three years and wasted college credits before I figured out what I wanted to do right right and that's a big story it's in the news you know student loans and you know you go to a four-year school but then by the time you get through it either everything's changed or the you know the technology is morphing so quickly you know so I'm glad that you had a chance to really decide to do what you wanted to do. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about um, lifestyles, like outside of your work and outside of maybe Breed Limitless is what you mm -hmm. do for fun. You do anything for fun or what do you like to do with all oh, your money I... you make? As a... <laughs> if you follow me on social media, you know I'm always out of town. I am on the go all the time. I'm from Detroit, Michigan, so mm -hmm. I go home a lot. Okay. Um, I have two older brothers and a big family. I have nieces. I love them to death. I go home a lot and okay. I travel. I'm always overseas. I'm okay. always shopping. <laughs> so yeah. it's been a lot of fun. Well, with your, your um, job that you do and with the company that you work for, it affords you those luxuries to be able to Absolutely. Go do those things. Absolutely. So there's a better lifestyle in place for you. So tell us a little bit about what a day-to-day -day, uh, nine to five part of your life is like at uh, the company that you work for. Yeah, so I would say that I work a very flexible schedule, which mm -hmm. is great, which is why like nine to five doesn't really always fit. Okay. You know, when people talk about jobs, they always assume nine to five, but I kind of make my own schedule. So as mm -hmm. long as I'm getting work done and things are moving in place, mm -hmm. then I could get to work at 7 a.m., leave at 3, mm -hmm. or get to work at 8, stay later some days. Mm -hmm. um, it just depends on what the work is like for that day. Right now I'm learning Ansible, which is a new network configuration tool. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're moving away from Chef. So I've just been spending the last couple of weeks really learning. Mm -hmm. um, and that's another thing. You never stop learning as an engineer. You, it never stops. Like, never. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I put emphasis that's on good. never. I think the biggest thing that I've learned is that learning never stops. Sure. Tell me a little bit about the word automation. So give me one example of automation and I'll throw out, you know, kind of the slow pitch softball. So mm -hmm. I have a desktop or a virtual desktop. And is it in that realm, or are you doing the server side? I'm on the server side. Okay. So I always say automation for me is like do what I say without me having to tell you to do it. Okay. Right? So automation is basically taking the manual uh, handprint away from everything. Like okay. things are still going to run whether I manually do it or not. It's automated. So instead of me going step by step clicking something and typing something, type. then I click again, then I wait 10 minutes, and I click again and wait 10 minutes, you actually do all that automation mm -hmm. for me so I don't have to sit there for an evening and do everything in sequence. Well, I don't even do it. The system <laughs> the, the, It's taking away the human interaction. Okay. So once you configure it so that you don't need that human interaction, then it's done. 
Fantastic, so, fantastic. Pretty cool. Well, I think you have a really cool job. Yeah. Uh, that, and probably saves the company a lot of time, energy, and money. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about Bree Limitless and this journey that you've been documenting. Yes, um, Bree Limitless is my baby. So it is like my personal brand. Mm -hmm. So I started off writing on Medium, which is a big platform for writing and like, it started getting a lot of traction. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of articles go viral and they were like, you need your own personal documentation. So I created this brand and it just took off and I started writing. I blog about my journey. I just released a blog about um, how to negotiate your salary, which is a huge thing. Like nice. a lot of people don't know how to do it. And then from there, I plan to teach people how to code, like especially young black women, people mm -hmm. of color. That's super important to me mm -hmm. um, that they get those repetitions in. And I am glad to be the person that's able to do it. Yeah, I think coding just historically is one of the foundational things, like you said, that base part of what a student should learn, even just to learn algorithms or the logistics of everything, because even in your world, automation, you're automating things that work with hardware. So if you take a combination of knowledge of hardware and software, you know, you it's a package that could lead to a job like you have. Yeah. So in the community or um, elsewhere, you speak a lot too. I had heard that you're a guest speaker on many different areas. Yes. Share, share maybe one of the most important opportunities that you had to speak or the most important audience maybe that you did? That's hard. That's, that was a, that's a tough question. Okay. But I would always say whenever I get to speak with children and mm -hmm. like be able to teach coding skills to kids mm -hmm. is always my best opportunity because I think the best opportunity is leading the way for those coming behind you. So whenever, even with Sisters in Technology, whenever I go into those classrooms and I'm mm -hmm. able to see those faces, it always just mm -hmm. makes me feel like what I'm doing is not in vain. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's why we exist. So, I thank you for the, the time that you spent here on our show. Are there any final thoughts or any final words that you'd want to leave with our audience? This is going to sound so cliche, but I just want to leave people with follow your heart. Like I think follow your curiosity mm -hmm. and following your heart are two of the biggest things, no matter what that is and career-wise for you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for having thank you for me. Coming. Absolutely. <laughs>
um, that seem to not always uh, find girls in the inner city. Mm -hmm. um, and I really focus on the inner city. So mm -hmm. um, I, we're headquartered at North, mm -hmm. but I have programs at Breck High School, which is a private school, mm -hmm. um, Minneapolis South, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, three middle schools in Watton, uh, Northeast Middle School, and Franklin. Wow. And um, we have programs there in the summertime. Uh, we teach our girls um, how to code, obviously. And then once they learn that, uh, they become my interns in the summer. And they teach uh, K through three and three through six in the summer. Wow, fantastic. So you actually have a whole employment thing going. So you teach them how to code. And then they give back by teaching younger students how to code. And then so this is a fantastic thing. Next thing you know, they'll start their own consulting company. So you're the founder of all this too, right? Yes, I'm the founder. We started off as Girls Who Code. Um, but unfortunately, with the uh, uh, limitations of being a nonprofit in Minneapolis Public Schools, mm -hmm. um, it, it does a lot better to become an LLC mm -hmm. and become Sisters in Technology. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's been, a, uh, actually, it's been positive for us, and uh, we're getting ready to go to Silicon Valley in another week uh, okay. um, during spring break and uh, go to Facebook, YouTube, uh, Salesforce, Man. and uh, can Twitter. I can you take, like, Old people, can I go? Because I want to go to Silicon Valley. Too. Yeah, yeah, come on. But uh, yeah, it's a great opportunity. Most of our girls don't ever get a chance to leave Minneapolis, mm -hmm. not else uh, Minnesota. So this will give them a chance to, to go to Silicon Valley and see um, what exactly those IT companies do. Absolutely. Well, maybe after you go, you can come back in about a month or so and then have bring a, bring a student or two and tell us all about what oh, that field trip was about, right? Yeah, they'll love to do that. Um, that would be a great, great experience for them. And um, they're looking forward to it. Uh, it's a great opportunity for them, and I don't really know of any other inner city uh, tech programs that have been able to do this, so mm -hmm. uh, we feel very fortunate and blessed. Absolutely. So what type of tech do you actually teach them? I, you teach a variety of things, as I recall, not just coding, right? Yeah. No, so, What's important to, the, to you to pass along to the student? Yeah, so, you know, especially, um, you know, in the inner city, you know, um, where kids might not have the same opportunity as some kids in the suburbs do, um, I just really want them to focus on what they like to do mm -hmm. in their life. So IT's in everything. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be a lawyer, um, like we have one of our students that wants to be a lawyer, there's IT in being a lawyer. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there's IT in being a nurse. Mm -hmm. um, there's IT um, in being a teacher. So as the future goes forward and everything that we do, and IT's in everything. Oh, sure. So that's how I'm able to bring the kids in because there's nothing you can tell me that you want to do with your life mm -hmm. that won't include IT. Yeah. So Well, the nice thing that, that we know about IT is if you're a nurse and you have the technology side, you get paid a little bit more. If you're a teacher and you learn IT, you get paid a little bit more. So all those things actually add up. Absolutely. So it does pay off in the end. It does. Are there any, um, you probably speak to students all the time, but for our viewing audience, what advice would you give to a 15, 16 year old young man, young woman about uh, the career maybe they should consider maybe options, right? Because you and I, and I'm just gonna interject one last thing is, you and I talked a little bit about how students can go, you know, right out of high school and start working, and then they can get a certificate, right, or learn to get technical certificates. We talked about Minneapolis North has good relationship with, like, MCTC community colleges. And so they have these opportunities, but where do you go? Is it a certificate, a two-year program, a four-year program? Because I know you've placed students in, like, OI, Summit OIC and different organizations. So give some advice to that 15-, 16-year-old on what you think you've seen is the best way to go? First of all, for the 15 and 16 year old, typically that's when kids lose interest in IT. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at uh, the numbers, kids typically lose interest in IT between 14 and 17, mm -hmm. 14 and 16. Um, so it's to keep their interest up um, you know, in IT. Um, one thing I could tell everybody is that anything that you're gonna do, and like I kind of repeat myself, but anything you're gonna do is gonna involve IT. Mm -hmm. um, the ability to be able to learn IT doesn't have to be at a four-year school. Mm -hmm. um, it could be at a two-year school. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually had a student that graduated already mm -hmm. um, from Summit OIC right after high school, and he's making pretty good money, pretty good money. already, mm -hmm. and he has a C-plus certification in nine months. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't necessarily have to go to four years of school. Um, we all know that everybody's financial situations are different. Mm -hmm. And sometimes kids go to, try to go to a four-year school and don't finish because of finances. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell kids, you don't have to go to a four-year school. Um, you can go to a technical school. You can go to um, a program that will allow you to get some type of certification. Mm -hmm. And you can still have a great life. Um, you don't have to depend on being eighty dollars to $100,000 in debt in order to have an IT career. Absolutely. 
Another thing, too, if they have these certifications and the two-year degrees, they can get into the workforce a lot faster or start their own business, of course. But you can maybe sign up with a company, a, a major company, local. There are more, you know, second, I guess, highest ranking number of world headquarters anywhere in the United States other than, you know, here in the Twin Cities. Get that job and then work with a company and have them pay for your four-year degree. Absolutely. Right? And not have them, but, you know, many big companies have training programs where they'll give you college money for college and all that stuff. So what you're doing is just fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, we have a student that uh, actually did uh, went through the program and um, he's at the Federal Reserve Bank. Okay. Um, the student that I'm talking about and they're going to pay for his additional education. Right. So that's one good thing too is placing kids in places that their employer will help them uh, further their education. So. Absolutely. Well, thank you for taking your time hey, today. Thank you I for your time. It. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for joining this episode of Altitude. As you saw, we had Cesar Duran, and he shared his career, lifestyle, and education with us, where you can understand that you don't necessarily have to follow a prescribed path. Sometimes you just kind of fall into things that you love to do. We also had a chance to hear from Brianna McCullough and hear about everything that she's been doing in her Breed Limitless, tracking her journey and blogging, so be sure to check her blog out, especially the young ladies. And also, too, we had a chance here from Mr. Walt Tower from Minneapolis North and Sisters in Technologies. He founded an organization that was run by students and has been able to allow it to grow and expand, serving the community on the north side in many, many different ways. So on behalf of the Minnesota STEM Partnership, my name is Dr. Michael Wolf, and I appreciate you for joining. And be sure to check us out on our next episode of Altitude. Altitude.